But somehow, as da today's Mike Dalton reports, one has slipped under the radar, and that's the British Lawnmower Museum. It's not quite yet the season for Silcox Funland at sunny Southport by the sea. As they say here, up north, the cyclone fence still wraps the carousel for the winter, but always open in Southport, except Sundays and bank holidays, is the British Lawnmower Museum. Since 1980, the museum has educated from above the mower and locksmith shop of Brian Radham, curator. It'll be a unique experience. I'm sure it will be, mate. A multimedia experience, dare I say. Come this way, it'll be more interesting. Okie dokies, I'm following you. Brian's affection for the machine reaches back to its genesis, and his collection is lovingly jammed over his store into a handful of small rooms with an amazing load-bearing capacity. It would be the Model T of mowers. Beautiful looking thing. It is a collection that salutes the prime of British engineering when the well-mowed lawn was a symbol of empire. It was just a shame to see these machines being thrown away. Some were made by Royal Enfield, famous for the motorbikes, and some were made by Rolls-Royce, and they're just really good quality machines. A collection containing the occasional article of Objet de Weird. Well, this one belonged to Albert Pierpoint, Britain's most famous executioner. Uh, of which he got paid £15 per hanging. Uh, and his lawnmower cost him £15. And I do wonder sometimes who paid for that lawnmower. Well, well, the blokes are young. As well as the obligatory celebrity contributions, which in these parts includes a cast member of Coronation Street, as well as, <coughs> stand back please, the ride-on gifted to the Prince and Princess of Wales on their wedding day in 1981, and apparently re-gifted to Brian. The museum was busy that day, drawing Bill Howell down for a squiz. We like looking at old things, so came to lawnmowers instead of stately homes, really. Now, I've known lawnmowers for a long time, all different sorts of ones. Along with Tony Allen and his wife, Brenda. And Tony has four mowers at home. How come you need four? Well, for doing different jobs. We're going to go now and look around the shop. OK. Oh, I might pick up, down there. pick up another model, maybe, mate. <laughs> Good on you. I didn't pick another model. All right. <laughs> All right, but was the missus blowing up back there, was yeah. she? I think I may have got Tony into trouble, but you won't be picking up another one today. <laughs> Sorry about that, Tony. Well, might, maybe make, make a layboy or something rather on the Q2. <laughs> so, if you're ever in Southport, sunny Southport by the sea. Not too sunny now, mate. Well, this is just the rare occasion that it's raining. Right. Normally it's nice and sunny. Talking it up. The magic figure is 11 degrees, and we're just about getting to 11 degrees now, so the grass will be growing. But if by chance it is wet, you could do worse than while away a damp day at the British Lawnmower Museum. Georgie just said there are some quirky poms. <laughs> just <laughs> Hello, Mike Dalton. <laughs> yes, Mike goes out there and finds them. <laughs> okay, Mike Dalton reporting there.